when it came time to, uh, you know, after I graduated and I was applying to colleges, I didn't know, you know, what on earth I wanted to do. Um, so I went and auditioned uh, as a musical theater major and ended up getting into this program at the University of Michigan and becoming, uh, you know, Michigan? <laughs> Are you, did you go there? You went there? I went there too. Were you in the Brent Wagner's program? Go Blue. Go Blue. Were you in Brent Wagner's musical theater program? Ah. <laughs> it was a great school. I had a, hi. Um, I had a great experience there. Um, and I went and took, you know, singing lessons and dance classes and acting classes. And, uh, you know, thought I was going to go be a, uh, go to New York and, and try to be a, a Broadway performer. Um, and then I found I didn't really have, you know, the, the, the love to enough to, to want to do it and like be waiting tables and trying to get a break and, and just trying to get a job in any show that would have me. And also the teachers told me that I wasn't very good. Oh. And I believed them. No. I, yeah. I probably could have, I don't know, I, I, I might have been happy doing it, but um, yeah, this, after two years we had like a, um, a jury and we had to like, uh, um, I don't know, we had to do a monologue and a song and a, and a, and a, and a bunch of stuff, and then they judged us. And then this, this one uh, professor sat down with me and she said, she looked me in the eye and she said, Jeff, I have to level with you. You have no talent and you'll never make it in the theater. But as a, but as a kid, I, I, I believed her. I thought, well, she's a teacher. She would know. So I just said, you know, the hell with this. And uh, I went to law school and uh, I became a lawyer. And then uh, after, uh, after uh, going through law school, uh, thinking that I was going to go uh, uh, practice entertainment law and find clients who were actors and uh, writers and directors, uh, I went looking for clients. And I thought, um, anyone with a career already already has a lawyer, so I should go where the young kids are, um, the next generation of young uh, musical theater people coming up, because they don't know lawyers yet. And I'm young enough that they can afford, you know, we can work together in this world, network, and meet people. So I joined this songwriting class uh, called the BMI Workshop in New York, um, thinking that I was just there to meet, I was, I was never a writer, but I was just there to meet uh, the young, talented writers who were coming to this workshop, and we're going to be the next generation of Broadway composers. And uh, so I joined this, and every week I had to write songs, and I got good at it, and I met a collaborator, and we started writing a show. Um, we decided to write a Muppet movie. And uh, because we were in New York, we met people that worked on Sesame Street. And they came into this classroom with puppets. And they performed our Muppet movie for us, um, which was actually fun. It won a big award. And we thought, wow, this is great. You know, this, this is, we're, we're, you know, people are liking what we're doing. Um, and then, so we got this, so we wrote this, this Muppet movie, we sent it to the Jenna Henson Company, we thought, you know, great, maybe they'll buy it and they'll make it, and we got uh, word back that they listened to it, they don't like it, and they're not buying it, and we thought, shit, you know, why have we been, we, we spent a year writing something uh, for, for other people's, you know, for, for the Jim Henson Company's puppets, which we could never get the rights to, and it was just hoping that they would buy it, and they didn't. And so we were stuck thinking, all right, so what do we do now? We, we had met these Muppeteers from Sesame Street, and we thought, so how, you know, it was fun doing it. Even though this, is, this project isn't going to get made, what can we do that's similar, uh, that could use what, the, what we started getting the ball rolling? And so uh, with these Muppeteers, uh, we thought, well, let's create our own puppets. And we'll create our own characters, and then we don't need to get permission from somebody else and, like, you know, take it to Jim Henson Company and say, please buy this. Uh, so we just started creating our own puppets and our own our own characters, and we, we sat with a with a, a designer with a, a yellow legal pad, and we started. We said, all right, so what if we did it like a, a parody of Sesame Street? Um, you know, and we'll have characters that are sort of spin-offs of that. And we said, so, so if you're going to do like an adult Sesame Street, what's the first what's the first thing that comes to mind? You know, whether what well, we thought, you know, uh, are Ernie and Bert gay? You know, they've been roommates for all these years. Um, you know, why are they still living together? So we thought, all right, so we'll do our version. Uh, we'll start with that. We'll do our version of, um, of Ernie and Bert. Um, and we changed their names to Nikki and Rod. Uh, so yeah, we made Ernie into Nikki and Bert 
Uh, we thought, well, it's such a hurt little word, Bert. So we, we, we made them rod. Um, and they looked like, you know, one had a long face and one had a, you know, and, and they can talk like this, it was very uptight. And the other one, you know, it was very jovial and you know, talked like this. And, you know, it was like, we thought, um, so the easy answer, uh, the easy answer is um, that our version of Ernie and Bert are gay, but we thought, once you say that, there's, there's not much funny about it. Uh, I'm gay, by the way. <laughs> so um, I thought once you... Um, <laughs> And, and my partner that I wrote this with uh, is not, so it was a little bit of, of the two of us. So we thought, but once you once you reveal that that our Ernie and Bert are gay, there's not much funny about it. But what if uh, the gay one is constantly denying it, is constantly in the closet, is like, right, oh, what are you trying? I'm like, what are you trying to say? So so that's how we started, you know, writing Nikki and Rod. So our Ernie character, our um, yeah, play for you. type character goes, um, if, if you were gay, that'd be okay. I mean, that's gay. I like you anyway. Because you see, if it were me, I would be free to say that I was gay, but I'm not gay. <laughs> hey. So you, you may know the song. Um, so, but it, so this whole thing started out of just an idea, um, you know, let's do like an adult version of Sesame Street, we'll change the names a little bit, and we'll do like our version of it. So, you know, we just wrote, you know, if you were gay, that'd be okay, I mean, because hey, I like you anyway. And, you know, so one verse turned into another verse, turned into another verse, before we know, oh, oh and the, kind of the, the, the motor of that song is, uh, you know, Rod comes constantly saying, no, Matt, stop, what are you doing? Leave me alone, I'm trying to read this book, you know, go away, you know, you're, you're annoying me. Um, so when we finish this one song, we go, wow, pretty good, you know, we, we, we wrote a song for a project, you know, what's the next one gonna be? Um, and we find it, try to find a, a title for it uh, that would sort of be Sesame, like Sesame Street, bring it to mind, would be our version of it. So we thought Sesame Street, and I think we thought kind of rolling off the tongue the same way, Sesame Street is Avenue Q. Uh, the Q doesn't stand for anything, but um, in, in the East Village of Manhattan, uh, there's Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C, Avenue D, and then across the river into Brooklyn and Queens, there's Avenue uh, E, F, G, H, I, J. So we figured, you know, we want a, a, an imaginary place that's like so far away from Manhattan that, uh, uh, it's a fictional place where the rents are actually affordable, and all the all the kids like coming out of college who don't have jobs or you know are trying to make it in theater or whatever, uh, they have to go live out there because uh, that's where the rents are actually affordable because it's far away from the middle of Manhattan. Um, and I don't know. So here's the theme song. to be able to, to make up a poem. So, you know, 
some, you know, sometimes you, you tend to think, well, uh, you, you need to be able to have certain skills, but you kind of work with what you have. Um, and so then we had two songs, and then we started writing a third, and we thought, oh, so what would, um, so we thought, what would our version of uh, Cookie Monster be? Uh, for, for in, in Sesame Street, Cookie Monster uh, is obsessed with, with cookie, cookie, cookie. You know, all he can see is cookies. We thought, well, what's the modern day equivalent of that? What do people get obsessed with? And we thought, well, we were both kind of obsessed with porn on the internet. So we changed his name from Cookie, cookie Monster to Trekkie Monster, because Trekkies are, you know, kind of obsessive about one thing. We thought it'll, it'll communicate that if you name him Trekkie Monster, he's, he, what you think of is, is coming, someone who's just kind of obsessed and we made him obsessed with porn. Um, so then we have this, this one. On the internet is for porn. The internet is for porn. I do think that it was porn, 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 porn. So. Oh, you know what? I can play one more thing that, that you might find neat. Um, so when, when we, when we when we were trying to figure out how to set up the show, um, when we had a handful of songs, and we thought, all right, how do we, how do we start? Um, we thought, you know what we really need to do? Uh, uh, like the, do, do you guys know the Muppet movie? Yeah. Okay. At the very beginning of the Muppet movie, Kermit the Frog is sitting on a lily pad with his banjo. And, and singing, and singing. Why, why are there? sitting on a lily pad just kind of explaining, you know, I just, I just, you know, I, I just, this is who I am and why I'm here, and he draws you in in his charming way. So we thought, if this, if our show is going to be about life after college, um, uh, we should have a college graduate just getting out into the world and kind of being like, here, this is who I am, you know, what, what do I do now? So, um, so, so, you know, let me turn this to So we, so we actually stole the music of, um, uh, why are there so many, and we just changed the damn lyrics. <laughs> to, to, to this, so I'm going to sing you uh, our version of the Rainbow Connection um, with, with our lyrics. It went like, it went like this. What do you do with a BA in English? What is my life going to be? Four years of college and plenty of knowledge have earned me this useless degree. I can't pay the bills yet, as I have no skills yet, and the world is a big scary place. But some So, so we totally stole it. We stole the music, and then and then we went and changed every note. Uh, so instead of what do you do with what do you do with we went what do you do? So I mean, why are there why are there so many? We went what do you do? With the, and we changed every. 
note, and then it became our own song. So we just we kind of changed it enough that I mean we kept the same uh, the same kind of rhythm and the t and like the the tone of it like. And, and so here's ours, huh? What do you do with a B in English? What is my life going to be? Four years of college, plenty of knowledge, have earned, have earned me this useless degree. I can't pay the bills yet, cause I have no skills yet. song and until I tell that story and sing the lyrics to the Rainbow Connections music which is where it came from nobody ever knows like nobody pieces that together so like you're, you you can totally steal the, I mean well I mean there's there's it, another word for stealing is you know inspiration we were inspired by that it, it started with that and then we just kind of changed every note now it's a completely different song it's really not stolen at all but it, but that but writing our own lyrics to the Rainbow Connection helped us create our own thing. Just like saying, well, are Ernie okay? So the question is, are, are Ernie and Bert gay? That helped us create okay our own version, Nikki and Rod, and it's not that anymore. It just kind of like everything. Everything starts from something, and it's a process that we used to say like if you kick enough sand over it, like if, like if you change enough notes, you change enough details. Not only does not does is it not not only does nobody recognize it anymore, but like it's not it becomes not stealing. <laughs> you kick enough sand over it, you change enough things, and it and it turns into something else. So like uh, Nikki and Rod, and if you're gay, truly is not Ernie and Bert. And what do you do with BA in English? Truly is not the Rainbow Connection, but it started there. It kind of grew into its own thing, and that's how. Uh, uh, our sort of adult version of Sesame Street became its own thing with its own characters, its own songs. It became about, you know, life after college and porn on the internet and uh, and it became its own show, uh, it became its own thing. It went to Broadway, it ran seven years on Broadway. We were, you know, the greatest day of our lives. It, we actually, we got these producers, we, 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 met, we, we did a reading of it, you know, just like you did here, and we invited, like, professionals to come see it, and, um, like, nobody showed up, but, 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 but one person showed up, and you only need one. The, the, one of the guys, uh, a real professional who showed up, had produced Rent. And he liked what we were doing, and we met him in the lobby afterwards. Uh, I recognized him because I knew his, his picture. He actually went to University of Michigan. Um, All right, Michigan. You know, look. So I recognized him and I went up to him and I said, you're Jeffrey Seller, you produce Rent. And he said, yeah. I said, I wrote this. He said, oh, you wrote this. This is really, this is really interesting. What are you going to do with it? I said, I don't know. We were hoping to pitch it, you know, as a, as a TV series, like for Comedy Central, like, like after South Park or something like that. We're gonna, you know, we don't really know TV people. We were thinking it should be a TV show. And he said, oh, yeah, you, you, you could do that. Um, but if you'd be interested in like developing it as a stage show, I'd be interested in producing it. And like when the produce, like it's one of those moments in your life, like and you'll have it, where you think this is what I'm doing, and then somebody says to you like, well, if you'd like, if, if you think about doing this other thing, uh, I'd be interested. And, and you go, bam! All right, we're doing that other thing. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know, like, how, how often does the producer of Rent, pretty good track record, say, I want to produce your show? So we said, all right, hell with TV, we're, we're, let's create it as a TV show. So he, like, led us along, we wrote more songs, we threw away some songs, we created, you know, we, we, we basically rewrote the story. Um, he brought in a, a playwright to work with us, and um, we wrote, we wrote a, a, a full version of it. Um, it sucked. Uh, we did it in a, in a table reading. 
and you know we could tell that it was just kind of long and boring, and we had we, we threw out the um, the story and we created we wrote a new story, and we were getting closer, but we, we did a reading of that, and that sucked too. And musicals take a long, long time to to create. So we threw that out, we threw out some songs, and we rewrote some songs, we wrote, we wrote some new songs, and over the period of five years, and this is the kind of commitment it takes because, you know, nobody paid us for this. It's all just kind of the excitement of, this is, this is going well, and it's, it's getting closer and closer, it's getting closer and closer, even though we keep throwing out versions and cutting songs and go, all right, here's an idea for a new song. Um, and, then, and then, I mean, we had a, we had a character in there, uh, we had Gary Coleman, in there as a character, and we didn't exactly know why, but we, we just felt like it fits, because we thought, well, it's an adult version of Sesame Street, and Sesame Street always had a special guest star, whether it's James Taylor, or uh, Beverly Sills, or, um, these, wait, what did I just see on there? Oh, Will I Am is on there now. Um, so they always had their celebrity guest stars, but we thought, all right, our version, like our adult Sesame Street is going to be about life after college, where you're, you're educated, you're ready to go into the world, you think you're going to set the world on fire, and then, and then you can't get a job except answering somebody's phones. And, and your life is not what you kind of expect to have, as great as you thought it was going to be, you know, your life kind of sucks. So, um, you know, and, you, and you're, you, you don't have any money, and you're still taking a hundred dollars from your parents, and it, it's, it's really killing your pride because you want to stand on your own two feet and be your own person, but but like you're you're still a kid, and and you, you can't get you can't get a good job, and you, you can't live where you want to live because you can't afford it. Um, so that's, so we thought us and all of our friends coming out of good schools are in this situation, and what's funny about this? Um, so we, we we wrote this opening song after. After what do you do in a BA, with a BA in English, with the puppet comes out and with his diploma in hand, and basically says, "I just graduated from school. Now what? You know, I, somehow I don't. I, I I can't shake the feeling I'm going to make a, a difference in the human race, but I don't know how. Uh, so all the other characters come out and go. Um, um uh, 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 Brian sa uh, says, "Yeah, when I was little, I thought I would be." Time a, a big comedian. You know what's funny? Uh, even after all these years, when I play it, I, I, I still have all the old versions in my head. And it, like, as I get to the next line, I'm like, wait, which version did we decide on? One version was, um, I, uh, when I was little, I thought I would be a big, a, a, a big comedian. No, that's what we ended up with. Oh. Big comedian on late night TV, but it used to be a um, uh, uh, great big talk show host on late night TV. So I don't know, I'm so confused. I can't remember. You know, even though the show is like, you only know the people who see it only know the final version. But I've, I've got all these old versions in my head. So, um, uh, a big comedian on late night TV, but now I'm 32, and as you can see, I'm not. come out when, you know, Kate, so Kate, who's a puppet, says to him, oh, come on, Brian, it's not, you know, your life's not bad, uh, you don't think so? Uh, no. And she goes, um, I'm kind of pretty, and pretty damn smart, I like romantic things, but like music and art, and as you know, I've got a gigantic heart, so But you know, we don't, we don't, we don't have them kind of cursing just for the sake of cursing. It's there's something. About, I mean, when she says, uh, you know, why don't I have a boyfriend? Fuck, it sucks to be me. It, it's the it, like we use the curses sparingly, but like it's at the beginning, and it kind of tells the audience, okay, these are like these puppets are like real people. They're they're not kids. They're not. It's not like for kids' audience. They're like after college, and they they they, they curse when they get mad. So 
Um, so that became the opening. It sucks to be me. Oh, one other thing I was going to tell you. Um, so, Adam, so uh, in the process of writing and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting, um, we, we had Gary Coleman as this, like the special guest star, and he was part of the show. But we couldn't figure out. Okay, so so why is like why is he there? We don't really. He never explains why he's there. We feel like he should be there. But we didn't really know why, so we thought, all right, well, we need to give him a song. So, so, oh, so the reason he was there was because instead of like these great role models who uh, who you can aspire to be like on Sesame Street, they're like positive role models. We thought if our show is about life after college, where your life kind of sucks, it's not you're not where you want to be yet. Who, like, what special guest star could be the poster child for life being great when you're a kid? and sucking when you grow up. So we thought Gary Coleman. So we gave him a song. We thought, what's the essence of him? It's that, that life has really beaten him down when he grew up, uh, but he had a cheerful, uh, okay mood about it. So we gave him a song called Schadenfreude that's take, how people take pleasure in the, in, the, in the misfortune of others, and people kind of laughed at seeing his misfortune. So over the course of five years, you know, you write, you rewrite, you throw things out, you find new things, and uh, one day you're standing outside uh, a theater in New York City and going, "Oh my, oh my God, like, that's our name! Like our show is opening on Broadway! <laughs> like really? Like this this Broadway theater is going to have our show?" And um, if you just stick with you know what you love and, and keep at it, even though you're not getting paid to do it, but you're just having fun, um, like the weirdest fucking things happen. You end up you end up in a Broadway theater. Okay, you end up in a Broadway theater, and and like on opening night, your parents are there, your friends are there. There's all the actors singing your songs and the, and, the, and the puppets and the press and they're taking pictures and there's a red carpet. You go, how did, how did we get to Broadway? <laughs> but it happened. And then, like, so the first year, we were up against, like, like the other shows that, that opened that year were uh, a show that Boy George wrote, a show that Tony Kushner wrote. Um, a show that Stephen Schwartz wrote, Godspell and Wicked, uh, and, and Godspell and Pippin wrote, it was called Wicked. And we were, were all competing, like, for the Tony Awards. So we, we got nominated for the Tony Awards, we're, were there in Radio City Music Hall, uh, like, nominated against Taboo, Carolina Change, and, and, and Wicked. And we, and we, and we won! <laughs> I guess if I could if I could teach you one thing, it's that that you don't know where your life is gonna go. You can't predict it. I mean I thought I was gonna be an actor. I ended up in law school, so I thought I was gonna be a lawyer. I ended up in the songwriting class just to meet law clients. We started writing the show, and now I'm a Tony-winning Broadway composer. Like how did that happen? So, but I mean, but, but, but every step of the way, like you meet somebody, you, you think, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then somebody says to you, well, you know, I can help you do this. And you go, all right, let's do that. And you, you just kind of, kind of go with where opportunity, like, like totally random seeming opportunities lead you. Like I, I went into the songwriting workshop to meet clients that would hire me as a lawyer. I did not plan to meet a collaborator to start writing a show that would go to Broadway, but like, 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 life, huh? Preaching, preaching. Re preaching. Preaching, oh. So you don't, you, you just, I, I never thought I would end up, end up here. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, so we've got the show on Broadway that just keeps running and running and running. People are seeing it, it opens in Vegas, it opens in London, it opens in Sweden, and Finland, and Israel, and Philippines and Russia and um, uh, 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 Brazil and I just went to an opening in Madrid. It's all in all these different languages, um, and it's wild. You know, life is life is kind of neat. So you have a lot to look forward to. <laughs> so wait, one more. There's one more. There's one more chapter to this. 
you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to give you the impression that like some people are lucky. Uh, I mean, we're all lucky, and we've all got these opportunities in front of us. It, you will. It's just a matter of going. Okay, let's do that. All right. Um, that's not what I expected, but let's go with it. So we're at our show one night, and the South Park guys were there. Matt Stone and Trey Parker, who I worshipped, you know? I mean, I love South Park as much as anyone else. Um, and uh, so I recognized them, and we went up to them, and we said, we love you guys, we want to, you know, we wrote this, and they liked it, we were like, we want to know you guys, so let's, 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 what are you doing afterwards? Can we go get a, you know, you want to go have dinner? So they said, sure. So we went across the street, and they said, what are you guys doing next? And we said, well, we've been thinking about doing this, this, you know, a musical about Mormons. And they said, oh my God, I love that. We love that idea. We want to do it with you. <laughs> and so we're sitting across the table uh, from like our heroes who created South Park, uh, who said, we want to write a show with you. Um, and I was like, wow, that, this is too weird. So we, we actually started. So we started writing it together. We wrote it together for three years. Um, it was a tough, tough collaboration, and uh, they kicked me out. You see, life not so great all the time. <laughs> um, but they, they went, we made a deal so that they could go forward. I get part of the money, we took my name off it. They went forward, it opened on Broadway. The Tonys are in a week or two, it's gonna win all the Tonys, and it's gonna, you know, so there's another show on Broadway. Um, it's, it, it's another story to show. Y you don't know, like, where, where things are gonna happen or where life's gonna lead. Um, good and bad. I mean, I, I wish I was still part of it, um, but it also led to good things. I ended up moving out to California and, and creating a whole life out here um, and, and getting really, really depressed and growing and, and, and really learning to, to not rely on, like, things happening the way you want them to, to, like, to have your own self-worth, but to, like, to know that we're, like, we're all... I mean, for lack of a better word, we're all like, you know, children of God. I mean, we're all, we're all here just to have, you know, ups and downs and, um, you know, to kind of be happy with where you are and who you are and, and excited about what's going to happen next. And that's my story. <laughs>